I used to take this stuff and it worked really, really well. And I continued to take it. And then I read a couple scientific journals that said it probably doesn't do that much. And I stopped taking it. And then recently I started taking it again. And I was like, why did I ever stop taking this? And it's one of these compounds that like, if you know, you know. If you don't know, there's not a lot of places you're going to learn about it. And this is a compound that is produced endogenously by our own mitochondria. Now, think about this. The mitochondria is where we have a lot of like sort of energy turnover. We take fuel, convert it into energy, right? There's a, it's a powerhouse. So it creates a lot of cellular damage or a lot of oxidative stress. So the fact that our mitochondria produce this compound, it's there to serve a purpose of protecting the mitochondria as sort of an oxidative stressor, like, or preventing the oxidative stress. The problem is our mitochondria only really produces enough for the mitochondria. And as exercise intensity increases and that output increases, it probably can't handle all of the oxidative stress and the inflammation that comes with that. The good news is we can get a lot of this compound from red meat. We can get quite a bit from even broccoli, mostly from red meat. But we can also take it in a supplement form because a lot of us aren't getting enough that we need from our diet. When it comes down to exercise recovery, being able to recover from an intense training block or even prolonged exercise, that is like the biggest battle. And that is a relative thing because whether it's me who's conditioned and like I need a lot of training volume to wear me down or you're 55 years old and you're just stepping foot in the gym for the first time, it's all relative what is intense, right? So we need to be able to recover from this. Now, I'm gonna give you the compound I'm talking about, but you need to understand how it works and we'll talk about dosing as we go on too. I'm talking about alpha lipoic acid. So let's go ahead and break down the literature and talk about the dosing and all of that. I'll also put a link down below for 30% off your entire first grocery order with Thrive Market. Cool news, I created a nut butter, a dessert nut butter with them. I have one that's macadamia nut butter. I have one that's cinnamon Brazil nut butter. Okay, and then I have one that is also chocolate hazelnut a lot like Nutella, except they're all sweetened with allulose, so they're super low carb, and you still get the polyunsaturated and the monounsaturated fats, especially in the macadamia nut one, but it also just helps us out, right? I created this product, spent two years formulating it with Thrive, so if you give it a shot, I'd really appreciate it. So you try that link down below, you'll save 30% off your whole grocery order. So that link down below, 30% off, plus a free $60 gift. Inflammation is good at the beginning of your recovery. If you run five miles, at the end of that run, you are going to have high creatine kinase, you are going to have high interleukin-6, probably high interleukin-8 and 10. Inflammation is going to be high. That's normal, don't blunt that. But if that continues on for days, that's your recovery. Like, if your inflammation is still high the next day, good luck performing as well as you'd like to. Or you gotta at least wait for the inflammation to quell. Well, that's where ALA comes in. It's pretty interesting. There's a study published in the journal, the International Society of Sports Nutrition, and it looked at humans and it looked at just this. They compared single session high intensity to a high intensity week long training session, like a week's worth of high intensity sessions. They found at the end of six days, a group that had alpha lipoic acid compared to placebo had tremendously different results. So if you measured IL-6, which is interleukin-6, the predominant inflammatory cytokine you see after exercise, the control group that did not have ALA, they went from six picograms per milliliter all the way up to 16 plus picograms per milliliter. The alpha lipoic acid group only went up a total of 2.7 picograms. That is not even in the same world. So if you have a longer intense training week, Controlling inflammation a little bit via alpha lipoic acid supplementation is entirely valid. Why are so many people still poking holes in it? Because I think a lot of the alpha lipoic acid research that's out there is looking at very casual worker outers. And if you have an intense bout, you may want to modulate that inflammation a little bit. If you're a casual worker outer, then maybe a little inflammation is good. I digress, let's look at more literature. So this study was published in the Biology of Sport, and they had subjects load 1,200 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid for 10 days prior to a 90-minute, fairly intense run, followed by 15 minutes of 10% grade, 65% VO2 max eccentric loading. 
alpha lipoic acid completely blocked the nitric oxide rise, the ISO8 rise, and lipid peroxidation, lipid peroxidase rise. These are huge oxidative stressors. Okay, nitric oxide is important for certain things in performance, but we also don't want too elevated levels. The lipid peroxidation aspect, that's huge in and of itself. It blocked this. Whoa, the control group had tremendous rises in this, which means intra-performance or as an ergogenic aid taken preemptively prior to higher intensity activity, it's going to decrease the inflammatory response and the oxidative stress that comes as a result. You have prepared yourself and buffered with an oxidative stressor preventative. But then if we look at a study on circulation, things get even more interesting. This was published in the Experimental and Clinical Endocrinology. They gave subjects 1,200 oral milligrams of alpha lipoic acid, 600 mill or 600 milligrams IV, or placebo. They found that capillary blood cell velocity reduced from almost 21 seconds down to just below 12 seconds. That means how long it took for blood to flow into the capillaries and saturate and get the blood cells where they need to go. That reduced significantly. We're talking nine seconds. What is going on here? Again, why don't we talk about this more? Again, it's like sometimes I think when something actually works, it's like we get scared to talk about it. Now, who is alpha lipoic acid for? I think there's three categories here. One, it's for the high intensity athlete that needs to recover. Okay, it's for the high intensity athlete that needs more training days, that needs more days in a week feeling recovered. This is the most obvious choice. This person would really get a lot of benefit from it in my personal opinion. And this particular person would probably wanna take in the range of 600 to probably even 1800 milligrams because we'll talk about it a little bit more, but bioavailability in an oral form is not real good. And we'll talk specifically about how to take it as well. Number two is the person that just wants glycemic control. And in this case, the dose could be lower. We could be talking 300 to 600 milligrams to get glycemic control dosage. If you were to increase your activity and want to decrease your oxidative stress, you can increase that. One thing you might notice is that your urine smells a little bit funny when you take alpha lipoic acid. It kind of smells like when you, take, uh, when you eat asparagus. And don't really have an explanation as to why. I could probably Google it, but it's just something I've noticed and a lot of people comment on. And the third person is someone that is maybe a little extra stressed out and had a hard workout and wants to decrease that post-exercise immunosuppression. So let's say you work out really hard and then you're about to get on an airplane and you're like, shoot, I don't wanna be around all these people like when I'm immunosuppressed. Those are the kind of times when periodically you may wanna say, I'm gonna take 1200 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid. There's only about 30% bioavailability in an oral form. And it's really hard to go and get an intravenous dose of alpha lipoic acid. If you can, that's great, absolutely. But orally, you're only gonna absorb 20 to 30%, which is pretty dismal. And if you take it in a, like a, a higher acidic environment, like with high stomach acid, it's gonna break down even more. It's very fragile. That's probably where the research kinda starts to come in that it doesn't work as well, because orally, it just doesn't do too well. So the idea is you wanna take it as close to an empty stomach as you can. So at minimum, two hours after you've completed food, finished food, <laughs> well, finished eating. But ideally, you wanna take it on an empty stomach. So this is a little bit tough because a lot of us work out and then we need to eat, right? What I highly recommend is if you work out in a fasted state, work out in a fasted state in the morning, then have your alpha lipoic acid, and then about an hour later, have your post-workout meal. This is gonna give you the best results here. That way you can allow that inflammation to kind of come down, but you're also going to create the right acidity for the potential better bioavailability of alpha lipoic acid. I also recommend not taking it every day. Okay? Just like any antioxidant, you want your body to produce, produce its own endogenous antioxidants. Only take it during the top, like upper 25% of your training intensities. And not just, I lifted heavier, I need to take it. It's more about that cumulative demand, like volume more than anything, less than intensity. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.